Hi, my name is Andrew. Thank you for visiting my YouTube channel. This is another video in a series on family investment offices in the USA. And if you're looking to reach ultra high net worth investors, this is a great resource for you to start with. Just a little bit about myself. I'm a fundraising strategist with 15 years experience in high-end real estate sales and marketing spanning Canada, Dubai, and the Caribbean. And over the last two years on Fiverr, I've assisted over 260 clients with startup fundraising, pitch deck refinement, investor outreach strategies, and custom investor databases. I also serve as an advisor to a New York private equity firm with funding commitments of $10 billion. This group diversifies across multiple sectors, including income producing real estate and engages in debt or equity financing ranging from $10 million to $100 million for each project. You can learn more about the services I provide by clicking my Fiverr link below. This video showcases DiBartolo Corporation in Florida, and they are one of the 425 family investment offices in the USA that are included in my exclusive database of investors. Company Snapshot, they're based in Tampa, Florida, classified as a family investment office and investment company. Sector is general. Company description, the DiBartolo Corporation was founded in 1944 and pioneered the first shopping mall concept which brought people together across the United States by providing a central place for the communities to meet their retail needs. Let's take a look at some key insights. DiBartolo Corporation based in Tampa, Florida. The DiBartolo Group with a legacy spanning over seven decades commands widespread recognition and respect in both the real estate and support spheres. Real estate development, the DiBartolo family's illustrious journey began in the 1940s when Edward J. DiBartolo Sr. revolutionized the retail landscape with the inception of the first enclosed shopping mall. By the 1970s, their family-owned enterprise burgeoned into one of the nation's most influential entities overseeing over 2 billion square feet of retail space nationwide. Presently, real estate constitutes the primary focus of the DiBartolo family's endeavors. DiBartolo development engages in the acquisition and development of property assets of varying scales, specializing in market responsive ventures, encompassing multifamily housing, hospitality, industrial, as well as retail and mixed use projects across the United States. Since 2003, DiBartolo Development has invested in 166 assets valued at approximately $5 billion. Let's just take a quick look at some of their portfolio. So let's take a look at the Family Investment Office database. So let's take a look at the database now. Uh, this is the spreadsheet for the Family Investment Office database. And in total, there are 425 firms. And as far as actual contacts, there's 1,230 because there are multiple contacts for each company in many cases. So you can see as I scroll down to the very bottom here, you're getting the first name and last name of the key contact. Um, the, uh, this database includes contacts, so you're not going to get any info at or uh, admin at uh, contacts, uh, but you can contact them via the website, uh, which is also included. So in that you're going to get first name, last name, email ID, entity type. They're all family office, but it will show, show whether it's single or multi. The firm name, website they've all been verified which basically means I've already run this database through an email verification system and every single website has been clicked so they are all either family offices or wealth investment companies that handle the uh, accounts of the ultra high net worth uh, contact and you would find those as multifamily offices now one thing is important to keep in mind that there are a lot of 
firms, or actually a few firms, uh, that are selling family investment offices on the internet. Now I buy almost every database. If you've watched my previous videos, you know that I have over 400,000 contacts. Uh, and uh, one thing that happens with family investment office databases are they're usually very unclean, they're very unorganized, misclassified. In other words, uh, this particular database came from 5,000 contacts. Yes, 5,000 contacts is a database that I purchased from a major group that had actually said that it was good as of 2024. Well, I can tell you that it's not good because when I clicked the contacts, a lot of them were not family investment offices. What happens is these companies scrape the internet and they come up with something that might say family and it just might be a uh, investment company uh, or a wealth manager or even an insurance company that uses the word family in on their website and that th therefore you're getting a lot of garbage. What I also have done is I've taken out all the philanthropy and the uh, charitable organizations. Now a lot of family offices are based on charities. And that's fine. There's no problem with that. But for the purpose of why most people come to me to look for family investment offices, as they tend to be real estate groups uh, looking to market their projects or other groups, uh, uh, especially those that are in the private equity side that are looking to uh, raise capital or to find uh, opportunities uh, to uh, do joint ventures with. So they're not interested in contacting uh, family investment offices that are charitable organizations or endowments. Now there are many of them, probably a couple hundred at least. So the beauty of this database when you get it from me is that all the heavy lifting has been done. Again, you're getting 425 uh, key firms and that's all you need if you need more than 400 contacts to market your project to and you're not getting any success you have to point the finger at yourself and the project because that's where the problem is this is the greatest collection of wealth in the United States there is no question about it so it's really important to understand how you do your marketing these databases are not to be used for spamming they're more for research so that you can actually try to add more contacts. Now, coming to the uh, quality of the database, you can see here I've got quality and result. Those are just the uh, uh, punch outs that I get from the email verification service. Now, what I've done is I've cleaned the entire database and you can see it has qualifications such as 60% good, risky and bad. Bad mean the email does not exist so they're not part of this database. Now risky means they may exist or not so I've kept those in there and the reason being is that a lot of companies when somebody leaves still leaves that email open so it's still an email that gets monitored uh, because the company wants to still remain uh, active with that uh, person's cont uh, contacts or clients so I've left them in there and anyway the key items uh, that you need to remember are that you're going to try to make contact you're going to check their website very uh, large amount of the contacts in this database uh, are going to actually have the key contacts you're also going to get a chance to look at their LinkedIn's in most cases uh, so they're very transparent as, as far as um, the type of uh, contacts you're going to get. Much more uh, transparent than you're going to see in a venture capital database uh, or a website. For example, in most venture capital websites, you're just going to get an info at, whereas these type of contacts tend to be more open, uh, uh, although in, in many cases you're going to have to do a little bit of digging and you're going to have to sort of refresh from time to time. Most of them are going to be okay. I would suggest every year you run this database through a email verification service as well. So getting back to the key points, so you're getting the firm name, you're getting the website, you're getting the city, they're all based in the USA uh, and it's very much spread out. Uh, 
you're getting LinkedIn uh, contacts as well. Now, I do not check LinkedIn's because most people don't change their LinkedIn addresses, of course, unless they retire. But for the most part, people change emails when they move from company to company, obviously, but they don't change the LinkedIn. So I left those as they are. It also allows you to possibly make other connections with people in their company. And you can see the date that they were verified was just last month because we're sitting here in May 2024 right now. And these were all verified in April of 2024. So that is the spreadsheet of what's included in the uh, Family Investment Office database. And you can contact me for more information on that. You can also check out my other gigs on Fiverr. I have a pitch deck review service that is really popular if you're getting ready to send your pitch deck out to investors. Let me take a look at it to make sure that it is actually ready to be sent out. I also have a guide to raising startup capital, 160 pages. Uh, I created this for first time fundraisers. It'll teach you how to do pitch decks, business plans and other key initiatives when it comes to fundraising and other fundraising gigs and if you need uh, help to write your startup pitch deck if you've got a business plan already completed I can actually get you started on that so just check those gigs out on my Fiverr profile. For more information on my databases and fundraising services click my Fiverr link below. Thank you for watching. Please like, share and subscribe.